Sure, for introduction. Sure, I'm going to continue this separation trend. Uh, my name is Horacio Aguirre. I am an assistant scientist at the Biological Systems Engineering Department at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. And today I'm going to share with you some of the results of a study we conducted some time ago about characterizing manure pre and post solid liquid separation and then relating um, those characteristics of manure to greenhouse gas emissions and emissions. And I think we think this is very important because you know, as manure processing becomes more important, it's going to be implemented in more farms and um, especially for modeling studies that use IPCC factors, uh, they're not considering these types of processing yet in, in, in the standards and emission factors of IPCC, for example. So it's very important to start developing and introducing, you know, this, the importance of, of, of doing that. Um, so we all know that manure has value, right? That's the name of this conference. Manure has nutrients. Uh, when the land applied can be used for crop production. Uh, it can, it has organic matter that can improve soil's health. Um, it can be also used to generate energy if used through anaerobic digestion. But if not managed properly, manure can also lead to negative environmental impacts, right? Such as emissions of greenhouse gases, ammonia, odor, uh, contamination of water streams, uh, to, from pathogens, nutrients, uh, through leaching and runoff. So it is, it is important. Um, manure processing has been getting a lot of importance towards not only increasing the value of manure, but also trying to mitigate and reduce these environmental impacts. Uh, specifically, solid liquid separation you know, is an interesting processing uh, technology because you know, it, it separates manure into a solid and liquid fraction. The solid fraction is more, um, you know, it has increased total solids and nutrients, uh, less moisture, so it can be more economically transported far distances, uh, for example, from uh, regions that are in excess of nutrients to regions that are a nutrient deficient. Uh, the liquid fraction, on the other hand, uh, has reduced total solids and reduced nutrients, so it can be probably land applied at higher application rates, um, and then it can be transported through pumps, uh, which can be also uh, be more more economic for the farmer. Um, so solid liquid separation is an interesting and promising technology, but we need to analyze how this really, really works. Um, Right, not all constituents, manure constituents or components are separated equally. Uh, not all separators have different separation efficiencies, probably that's what you tell in the report, Jeff. Uh, and which is very important for, you know, the quantification or estimation of downstream environmental impacts such as greenhouse gases or ammonia emissions because they depend on these separation efficiencies. So with this, Study what we did is first characterize uh, manure pre and post uh, separation um, and also drying. There are three farms that have dryers, also the separator solids. Uh, then we estimated and compared the separation efficiencies of two mechanical separators, uh, screw press and centrifuge. And then we related these characteristics to greenhouse gases and ammonia emissions. So the first part was uh, experimental. So we sampled nine dairy farms uh, in Wisconsin. All of these farms had separators, actually eight had screw press, and only one had centrifuge. Uh, seven farms had also digesters. Uh, two of, of the other two farms had a bedding recovery unit, so which means they separated uh, the manure with screw press and then separated solids were dried uh, with a rotary drum in both of these farms uh, to be used as bedding. Uh, one of the farms with the digester also included a drying step, so digester separation and then drying the separated solids. Uh, six farms used only dairy manure as the substrate. Three farms had mixed substrates, uh, dairy manure and food waste. Uh, they also had some punch manure. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, so this graph shows a little bit better where uh, the samples were taken. So we sampled <coughs> manure uh, every two weeks for a total of 17 sample sampling events in each of those sampling points that are marked with the S there. So we tried to sample manure. Manure was sampled actually before and after each processing step. So in order to isolate the effect of that processing unit. Um, and then manure was analyzed for total solids, volatile solids, 
total nitrogen, total molecular nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. We uh, determine the separation efficiency. We use two indicators to kind of evaluate and analyze the separation efficiency. Uh, separation index, which is really telling us how well a specific constituent is concentrated in the solids fraction, and telling us the same thing, but with, from different perspective, the removal efficiency. The second equation here is telling us how well the liquid fraction is being purified from from that constituent. So we want to analyze both fractions based on, um, this is actually based on a recently published paper, it's Yulin et al. 2009, that was a meta-analysis of 20 um, papers of, with separators. So they did a very, very careful analysis uh, and came out with these two equations. So we use those. Uh, so now that we have the characteristics of manure, uh, we related those to greenhouse gas and ammonia emissions using um, equations from the IFSM model, the integrated farm system model, for you're familiar with that. Al's here, uh, so he's the lead on that. Um, we uh, evaluated methane emissions, uh, nitrous oxide from manure storage and land application. Uh, we considered a 100 year time horizon to, you know, assign the global warming potential to both of these gases and bring them in the same language, kilograms of CO2 equivalents. Uh, we considered or assumed a uh, six month storage uh, before manure was being land applied to both the liquid, liquid and solid streams. <coughs> so, sorry, I'm battling with a terrible cold here. Okay, so for some of the results, uh, this graph I just wanted to show um, how the characteristics of manure look like before going into the separator. So in blue, that's the screw press, and in orange, the centrifuge. And uh, just wanted to highlight that despite that there's variability, you know, among and between farms, uh, based on separator types, that the average concentration is not uh, statistically significant, which, you know, will allow us to um, draw better conclusions or more definitive, definitely, definitive conclusions on the separation step. But then when we analyze the separated liquids, uh, this graph shows separated liquids, we start seeing some, some differences, especially for, for total solids, volatile solids, and phosphorus, uh, which you know, might indicate that one of these separators is, is doing a better job um, than the other. Uh, but when we analyze separated solids, the separated solids, uh, we can see that this significance is only maintained for total phosphorus TP, and we can see a wider difference between Separators, so which might you know suggest that really centri centrifuge is achieving a higher concentration in solid fraction uh, than screw press. But I want to also see the big picture, right? Everything. So these these two graphs are showing us the three fractions. So in blue, what's going into the separator before the separation step. In, in green, the liquid fraction after separation, and in gray, the solid fraction. Um, <coughs> SP screw press, C, centrifuge, and we can see as expected that, you know, for total solids and volatile solids, that the concentration in the solid fractions increase after separation, and that the concentration of the liquid fraction is in decrease, of total solids and volatile solids in the liquid fraction when comparing to the heat uh, manure. But when analyzing in that second graph over there, uh, the nutrients, uh, we, if we see the TAN, for example, total ammonical nitrogen, we can see that really most of the ammonical nitrogen is following the liquid fraction, so it's really staying there. Uh, phosphorus indeed is concentrated uh, with both separators uh, in the solid fraction, but as you can see, centrifugation achieves a much higher um, concentration than screw press. Interestingly, for potassium, we didn't see any significant difference, uh, which might be an indication that there's some separation, there's some concentration in the solid fraction, but it might be still low. So interestingly, separating in the same ratio to maintain the same concentration in all streams. Uh, for the separation efficiencies, remember we evaluated these two indicators, uh, the separation index here on the left, telling us how well each constituent is being concentrated in the solid fraction, and then related to that, uh, how well the, the, each, each of these constituents are uh, purified from the liquid fraction, so they're both related. Um, we can see that total solids, volatile solids, and phosphorus are achieving a um, 
better you know, concentrations in this in solid fraction, achieving higher um, separation indices, indices. Interestingly, screw press in blue is achieving a higher concentration for total solids and volatile solids in pharmaceutical example. Uh, but we can see that for phosphorus, really centrifuge that maintains that, that high efficiency. Uh, we can confirm that for total molecule nitrogen, really, there's that staying with the liquid fraction. Same for, for potassium. There's some, there's some, um, much better actually. There's some concentration of potassium in the solids fraction, right? But still, the liquid fraction is not purified at all, which might explain the lack of significance of that previous graph that we saw before. So, I mentioned that three of these farms have also a drying uh, step, so dryers, rotor cramps. Um, D1, D2, D3 in the dryers. The last D3, the last dryer is the, the, the dryer that or the farm that was also digestion, remember, with a digester. Um, here I'm presenting um, the change in the concentration of total solids, volatile solids, and total molecular nitrogen, because those are the ones that are going to be most affected by the drying step. Uh, in green, there's the concentration before the drying step, and then that dark gray the concentration after, we can see that, you know, as expected, the concentration of total solids is increasing, so we're losing moisture, really, that's, that's what this is telling us. But also we can see that, um, oh, good, great, <laughs> that volat some volatiles of the volatile solids, we found that some volatile solids are, were lost during the drying process, around 3 or 4%. Uh, same happened with total molecule nitrogen, and this is especially true for this farm, uh, that had a higher initial total molecular nitrogen content. Remember, this is farm with a with a digester, uh, just losing a higher percentage of of, of uh, time. Uh, but uh, uh, despite that, there's some losses of, of nitrogen. Remember that almost all of that total molecular nitrogen followed the liquid fraction. So in terms of really the amount of nitrogen that's being lost to the atmosphere compared to the amount of nitrogen that stays with the liquids, it's like really really small. <coughs> okay, so with all these characteristics, now after separation and separation efficiencies, we were able to model uh, greenhouse gas emissions here with this graph and, and ammonia emissions uh, during storage, these first uh, parts and application of manure. And we um, model two scenarios a scenario with no separation, so we call this the raw manure, really is taking the characteristics of manure before going into the separator. And then the, the scenario with separation. Uh, we can see for both of these scenarios, really, the most of the emissions happen during storage as methane, which was expected. Uh, and all of the, the majority of emissions after land application happen as nitrous oxide. Um, most of these emissions, again, happen from the liquid fraction um, because of the low um, you know, separation efficiencies. Now, this little point here is just the total of storage and application. But also, we saw interest in reductions achieved by solid liquid separation. So, this is you know, intuitive because we're now separating 30-40% uh, of those volatile solids are going into the solid fraction now. Um, so, there's less opportunity um, for carbon to be emitted as methane from liquid storage. And um, methane is less susceptible to being lost from solid fraction. Right, so we're having interesting reductions. Uh, same here with the <laughs> ammonia emissions. Most of the emissions happen from the liquid fraction, uh, but he, but this time uh, most of the emissions are happening also after application. This is because we model surface application. Uh, if injection was uh, you know considered as managing practice or rapid operation, so the story would be totally different here. But we just wanted to see the effect of the separation. You know, step we, we didn't evaluate management practices. So there's opportunity to bring down emissions, of course, with, with, with management. Um, but also, we were interested. Okay, so solid liquid separation can achieve emission reductions at these efficiencies that we measure. Uh, but what happens if we we reach high efficiency profiles? So this uh, meta analysis, uh, this study that I, that I mentioned before, is lying at all. Conducted a, a careful, um, you know, um, analysis of 20, 20, 20 separators, twenty studies with separation, and 
they determine two profiles, a low efficiency profile and a high efficiency profile for separators. So we say, okay, what would happen if we were to achieve the high efficiencies like this that were achieved by other separators that are out there in agricultural settings? So we did that, we matched our separation efficiencies of each of our constituents. And uh, for greenhouse gases, we achieved significant reductions, right? Of uh, mostly from methane. Uh, from the liquid fraction storage. Um, as the separation efficiency increases, though, there's more, more, more emissions now that are happening from the solid fraction, right? But uh, these emissions are not high enough to, to cancel or, or reduce the, the benefits of the, the methane reductions of, of, of liquid um, storage. So still, we're getting, we're getting a uh, high reduction of greenhouse gas emissions overall of around like 60%. Same trend happens for uh, ammonia emissions, you know, as separation efficiency increases, so there's more ammonia that's being going to be emitted from the solid fraction, of course. We consider that the solids uh, were stored, so with management, again, this can change. Like if they're used, the solids are transported outside the farm, they're pack packaged and, and used as uh, you know, organic matter, then this would be different. <coughs> so, some takeaway messages that I, I wanted to highlight here. Um, we saw that um, centrifugation then achieves a, a high efficiency for phosphorus, but interestingly, we, we found that screw press can concentrate all solids and all the solids in the, in the solids fraction uh, a little bit better. Um, Nearly all of the total molecular nitrogen is following the liquid fraction. Uh, this has huge implications, especially for modeling studies of greenhouse gases and ammonia emissions, because probably there's a probability that we have been underestimating ammonia emissions from liquid storage here, but probably overestimating N2 emissions from um, you know, solid storage of, 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 of manure, um, storage of the separated solids. Each manure has a specific and unique separation profile, so we cannot assume that all the nutrients have followed the same separation efficiency as total solids. We so, um, we also evaluated manure drying so that there's you know, a concentration of total solids after the drying step in the solids fraction, but there's some volatile solids in total molecular nitrogen being lost. However, if uh, the total molecular nitrogen follows the liquid fraction of its entirety, those losses um, are not are very small. And finally, you know, solid liquid separation has been always um, advertised as a very interesting processing technology to achieve nutrient management goals, but it can also achieve greenhouse gas emission reduction goals, especially if we were able to achieve those high efficiency separation um, profiles that some separators are are currently achieving in every process. Okay, with that, uh, I don't have any more. If you have any questions, happy to take them. One quick question. Just a real quick clarification. Sure. When we talk about a rotary drum dryer, is that active drying, adding heat, or is it just a drum composter and using the engine? No, it's adding heat. It's adding heat.